right, welcome back. Now, the cost of living has been a topic of discussion the last few days. However, one aspect in particular took center stage, and that was food prices. Now, whether it was a hashtag generated for political mileage or a real issue facing Kenyans, hashtag lower food prices dominated social media earlier this week. Well, tonight on the Voters Hub, we have a candid conversation on what pains Kenyans most in the food department, what's driving up prices and what Kenyans need to consider going into the next election when it comes to their food basket. Well, before we start the conversation, let's get a sense of the situation now. Well, Kenyans spend almost half of their household income on food. So just as what does that mean in terms of the prices going up? We compared the prices of key household items between this February and last February. February. Let's take a look at that table. Well, sugar went up by 58 shillings, margarine by nine, bread by five shillings more. Vegetable oil saw the highest spike at 326 shillings. Milk is up by two shillings and flour now up by rather up to 150 shillings, which is a 13 shilling increase. Several factors have been blamed for the rise in food prices from increased taxes on everyday household goods such as cooking, gas, fuel and of course food, a weakening shilling that has seen a spike in the prices of imported goods, not to mention the COVID-19 pandemic which disrupted global supply chains and the ongoing drought in the region. So let's unpack all of this as I introduce my panel very quickly. We have Ruth Bolo, chairperson of the International Relations Committee at the Young Democrat Union of Africa. We also have Steve Biko Afula, entrepreneur and financial analyst and Hannah Wanjohi Ngari, counselor entrepreneur and coach. Thank you all for joining me this evening. Let me begin with you, Steve, uh, just in terms of, and I just kind of rattled off a few factors that would drive up food prices, but how did we get here? Why are we having to deal with such high prices? Uh, basically, the bottom line is our, our, our tax code. Because of how our tax code is framed, everything has actually become very expensive. Because of the, uh, the high taxes that Kenyans are actually paying, uh, we've seen high cost of energy, high cost of fuel, high cost of production, and at the end of the day, basically high cost of um, farm inputs. And uh, this is what actually the problem is, because um, in the last one year, we've seen a lot of our farm inputs uh, go up by mostly more than 56%. Mm. So fertilizer, last year was around uh, 3,400 DAP. Now it's actually at 6,200. So that's almost 100% increase. So the, the level of taxation is actually the biggest problem that we have. Uh, that is actually the, the denominator in terms of what's really causing uh, the high uh, cost of living. Then secondly, basically our toxic politics. There is no political goodwill to be able to actually sort out the issues that we actually need to. Um, thirdly is actually government spending. It's been too much. Uh, we've been spending a lot of money on, on useless things. Uh, we've been increasing uh, what, we, what I would call the debt ceiling in terms of our borrowing too high. And then basically fourth is corruption. I mean, we have two, two billion shillings are lost every, every single day. So these four factors have had a, a, a negative repugnant a ripple effect into the economy. And it's actually become unbearable for many Kenyans. You've, you've said that 50% of our income is actually spent on food. It's actually more because um, Many families, middle class, actually spending 60% on, on, on food alone. Yeah. The other 30% on rent. Then the, the rest is left on paying school fees, uh, paying transport, uh, having emergency, paying off debts. So basically, majority of us, uh, we've had 6 million people actually falling below the poverty line. And um, not to mention climatical changes that we've, we've seen locally in, in the country and globally. It's going to have a, a more uh, negative impact on, uh, on our food prices because... Um, Traditionally, the food basket counties in, in North Rift, South Rift, and Western Kenya are no longer producing enough to actually sustain the food demand in the country. And we've seen the National Cereal Board actually saying that they do not have a single bag of maize in their reserve. So we're actually staring at a, at a bleak future in terms of our food security. You know, um, Ruth, Steve talked about the tax code. I mean, that's a, a fiscal policy issue. And, and many times you'll find whenever these things are, are developed or put together, um, it kind of profits just 
a small few, you know, a small number of people. But it doesn't impact Kenyans who, at the end of the day, we're the ones who end up paying those high food prices. So really, who you vote for matters. You know, what should people be thinking about when it comes to, you know, the politicians that they put in office, who will then put together a lot of those policies that will affect their everyday lives? You see, unfortunately, um, we are not at a point where we are scrutinizing the laws that uh, these parliamentarians or this uh, member of county assemblies will push through because they are they play a key role in you know putting some of these policies together. We are still asking ourselves about we, we still want them to tell us the immediate things they'll do, some of the very temporary things that they can do for us. But really what we should be asking them, like I think I've said before, is number one, how are you going to resource mobilize for certain things? How are you going to bring back certain cultures that really held us together? How are you going to, because some of these issues are cultural or societal for that matter, because I'll tell you, there are some areas where they have dams and they have the canals that easily go to their farms. But what do they do with that water? They use it to wash the clothes. So some of these things are really societal and cultural. So what we should really be asking our aspirants during this time is what policies really are close to your heart? What policies really, um, in terms of food, in terms of agriculture, in terms of transport, you know, all these things that tie together to sh see these prices as affordable as possible. But most importantly, even as, because we want to move from being a third world country, what we should really be aiming at is ensuring that each and every person is able to at least afford yeah. that amount. Because right now the problem is not so much the costs of the taxes and so because there are countries that are paying more. The issue really is that people are not able to afford that amount. So we should be able to look, we should actually be looking at how do we ensure that our people are able to afford that amount, that people are able, to, and, and the taxes that we pay really are working for us because if I'm paying tax and I'm not able to afford food because Kenyans right now are going uh, are only having a meal a day if you're lucky enough to find tea in the office then hey that's a really good day for you yeah yeah I mean you've talked about what Kenyans have to do to cope right you just have to do less meals in the day you know Hannah when you hear things like tax code the average Kenyan is thinking I don't really know what that means or care what I do care about is I can't afford food I can't put it on the table. So, you know, what are some of the other coping mechanisms that most Kenyans are having to do now to stay afloat? Because it seems these things won't go away anytime mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. Okay, most of the people, Vicky, have cut down on luxury. And when I talk about luxury, I mean, uh, people used to maybe take their kids out in parks to just have fun and also have a bonding session with them. But looking at it nowadays, it's, you can't afford it because basically, you can only look at food. Every time you think about home, every time you think about a coping mechanism, you just check on where can I cut down on cost. And um, it's really affecting various areas, also in terms of our family setups. In the African setup, people rely on one another, and especially parents. But now you have even to cut cost on how you uh, help your relatives or even your parents. You also uh, cut down on food. Just like my friend has said, yeah. uh, having one meal is enough. You even have to push your kids to know that having one meal is, is quite good enough and you can do with that. And I can actually say it's not, it's not really a good thing and it's really affecting a lot of people and especially people who are below a dollar a day. It streams down so badly to them and even to the rest, right. and it's, 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 it's a sad story. Yeah, it's a sad story. You know, Steve, so we've talked about everything that is wrong with the situation, right? And the hashtag was lowering food prices. How do we do that practically? Uh, well, unfort <clears throat> sorry, unfortunately, uh, for the next decade, we're not going to be able to lower the food prices yeah. unless one, we, we have one opportunity in August to actually elect the right leadership. and. Uh, Whoever becomes president will have a problem in terms of trying to get uh, wiggle room for them to be able to lower the taxes right. that will be required to actually, to one, zero rate the farm inputs. Because for us to have affordable food products, we need to actually, one, zero rate the taxes in, in terms of our farm inputs, that is one. Two, we need to actually lower the cost of energy and cost of fuel because of, uh, uh, so that we can be able to enable farmers access markets affordable. And basically three, creating access of credit to farmers to be able to give them uh, the impetus to actually farm. Because this year, I doubt many of the farmers are going to farm because of the 
expensive uh, farm inputs. And then also secondly, looking at the climatic changes that you're actually seeing, uh, many of the arable areas are no longer uh, conducive for farming. And this is a big problem. And this is one of the things that are actually the political class needs to actually address. How do you protect arable land from actually turning it into real estate and construction? Because uh, key, key counties like Kiambu have actually turned from co-farming uh, practices into real estate. And this is actually a very big problem because now we, we are straining the little arable land in, in, in terms of being able to feed the rest of the country. And we are seeing projects like Galana are no longer actually active. We're seeing corruption gaps. Uh, we're, seeing, we're spending billions uh, to, to few people who are actually connected being able to get it. So. I don't see a way around for any leader in terms of um, how to be able to lower the cost of uh, food because of how things are set up. The only way we can be able to get a wiggle room will be to, re to stop government expenses, to stop any hiring, both for civil teachers and the police, for at least five years so that uh, we're able to actually uh, create room for the government to see if they can be able to zero rate uh, agricultural farm, farm inputs. Ruth, you just heard Steve say, uh, not anytime soon will we see these prices go down. Uh, and that's quite serious. When you think about people not being able to feed themselves something so basic, what are the implications uh, you know, of that if it's not solved in good time? Um, allow me a second before I dive into that. Just to add on to what Steve has said, we need to bolster Kenyan's participation in this. Yeah. Because I know we are saying, we're talking a lot of uh, government input, but citizens equally have a role to play. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of wastage that goes into food production, uh, right from, you know, not just in terms of our consumption, but in the production of it, while we are transporting it, you know, the retail part of it. So we need to see how do we reduce this wastage and how can we turn this around? Um, how, what are some of the modern methods that we can use. And it's not just farming. Uh, it's not just agriculture, rather. I know we have a lot of livestock, or rather we used to. But nowadays, uh, livestock is only left for dowry repayments. Rarely do you hear someone saying, I need to invest in, in dowry. I need to ensure that my cows, you know, uh, procreate. So to your question on the implications, number one, we're going to lose a generation. Because unlike um, several years back where students used to run to school so that they can be able to have a meal, now even that meal we used to say is not enough is not there. So we are going to lose, one, a generation out of starvation, and two, we are going to lose an uneducated generation. Because what then is going to happen is why do I need to go to school if, like we've seen in the news, yeah. I only have one teacher in the school, I don't have a meal. I need to at least help my mother who most probably has arthritis, you know? And so these are some of the issues that we need to, to really think of even as we are com uh, campaigning or listening to the aspirants. The second thing that we are going to face is that we are going to end up, I mean, when Kenya uh, gained its independence, we were at the same level with Singapore. Mm -hmm. But several years down the line, we are, two completely di we are two completely different places. In fact, if you tell someone that we were, we were at once the same place as Singapore, they'll probably think you're mad. So we need to go back and really sit down and ask ourselves, where did we go wrong? What are some of the countries that we can benchmark? And by benchmarking, I don't mean what the politicians go to do when we are having this World Cup and so on. We really need to go and have proper studies and check what do we need, what can we borrow from these countries and suit it in a way that uh, Kenyans can fit in and help out. Because in as much as government does have um, a big role to play, citizens equally have a bigger role to play. Even if you g bring, like he's saying, um, affordable loans to farmers and you don't teach them how to use the different or the little resources that they have, then you're doing no good. Yeah. yeah. You know, let me finish with you, Hannah. Um, just in terms of what then the average Kenyan family can do. You know, we've heard Steve and Ruth talk about maybe from a policy, governmental standpoint. But, you know, people have to cut back. That's just the reality. We had COVID that literally took our budgets out of the loop, you know, and, and now we have to think about what are we spending on? What can we cut back on? You're the budgeting queen. That's why I have you here on yeah. the panel. But what would you actually tell people to do? Uh, before I even tell people what to do, I'll, I'll also echo what she has said and even add up to what she has said. Like uh, when we look at um, our manufacturing in Kenya, because of the cost of fuel, that is the diesel and the petrol, it's too high. So basically it means that even the prices definitely shoots up. Then number two, we also have brokers. In Kenya we have brokers. <laughs> and those brokers really make life a hell. Mm. You know, we have allowed so many brokers in between such that it, it becomes very hard. The farmer on the other end does a lot of work 
But who benefits? Again, the broker. And who is this broker? The big tycoons. So if we can eliminate the brokers, I think it will also work. If we can also bring down the cost of production by lowering, especially power, you know, I think it can also work. Nowadays, a normal person, um, a middle class person, in a month, they'll spend like 6,000 on electricity. It's, 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 <laughs> it's unheard of. It's, it's crazy. So how do people improve their spending, you know, cut back? Uh, uh, to tell you the truth, right now it's, it's a bit tricky, yeah. but there's always a way out. For example, by just making sure that um, uh, not doing the bulky uh, shopping, do a day-to-day -day shopping, and, and, and then just prioritize on the things that you buy. Is it necessary? Is it a must-have? If it's a must-have, then how cheaply can I get it? Go, 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 go to the roots. Like, go to Marikiti, you'll find it's easier than just walking into a supermarket, which is maybe like three times the normal uh, wholesale price. So cutting down uh, means that also people learn budgeting. It, it has become the hardest thing to do, simply because people work with what they have. Yeah. But I always tell people, when you have a budget, it will always help you in how you spend your money. It will, help, it will give you a discipline on what to do and what not to do. Because at the end of the day, this is Kenya. We still have to live. But then how we live is what matters. So budgeting, Victoria, budgeting, budgeting, I'll keep on saying budgeting, <laughs> budgeting, and people have to learn. We'll they have, have to, to be taught. Absolutely. We, we even need to teach our kids in schools financial literacy. Let that small child know how to spend their money. I, I have a policy in my house that 30 bob a day, save 30 shillings. When, when, when you have 30 shillings every day, how much money do you have? Then that is your money, yes, but how are you using it? Right. You cannot just buy anything simply because you have a saving. So I'm, I'm, I'm calling out on people to learn on budgeting. Let this be, and it can also be put in the schools, financial literacy. Let everybody learn such that that small child will grow up knowing what is money. You know, let them also be taught taxes. Certainly. You know, when Biko was talking this about tax taxes, code. I was just looking at him and I was just saying, hmm, I wish people can learn taxes in school. Yeah. You know? well, we have to leave it there, but yeah. thank you so much, Ruth. I know you're itching I to say itching. something really quickly. <laughs> really quickly, two things. One, I think on the issue of pandemic that you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, we are also feeling the effects of COVID, yes. But we are feeling the effects because we've not prepared ourselves for a pandemic. So moving forward, we need to actually prepare ourselves for that. Otherwise, if anything else happens again, then we continue going down the drain. And two, I want to differ greatly with Hannah because there's so many, only so much you can cut down on. Mm -hmm. Right now, if you go to some areas, toothpaste to just have that one swab of paste is five shillings. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have that in, if you have that every day, you realize that it becomes more expensive. So in as much as we are talking about budgeting and telling Kenyans to budget and cut down, there's only so much you can cut down on. It gets to a point that you tell yourself, okay, I don't even want to have milk. I'll have black tea. Yeah. But if you look at that tea bag, you're, you're, you're choosing between buying one for 50 shillings and buying one for 51 shillings. Mm -hmm. So in as much as we're telling Kenyans to budget, it gets to a point that you don't, there's only so much you can do. You can tighten that belt, but so much. Thank you so much, Anna, Steve, and Ruth. Uh, that's all the time we have on the Voters Hub. To keep the conversation going on social media, the hashtag Voters Hub, hashtag Citizen We Can. Stay with us. Sports News up next.